Hi folks. Uh, this is another one of my tutorial videos. This one, it's I'm kind of showing you how to fix a problem that may happen to you at some point. I've seen a few people complain about this in the forums when they did silly things with the software and they couldn't get their hardware to work anymore. So let's explain what this is and why you might need to do it. One, this is a kind of last resort type option. You don't really want to do this unless you absolutely have to. There's a fault finding guide on our forums that goes through most of the main problems you encounter um, or could encounter with your virtual hardware. Um, one of the very bottom ones on the list is the one that shows you a hard reset. So first I'll explain why you might need a hard reset and what exactly it's doing. Now, if you're in the middle of, say for example, flashing the firmware and your antivirus kicks in or something weird happens um, on your computer, then what will happen is it could corrupt the firmware that's running on this device. In this case, it's a uh, Warbird uh, base I'm, I'm working with today. And that is pretty bad, but the good news is that people that design embedded firmware are quite clever. There are two parts, two actual pieces of software in this. The first part is called the bootloader, and the bootloader's job is to basically switch the thing on and if it's not being asked to update the firmware, that's the, that's the application or system code as you would call it, then what it does is it just loads the system code and goes. Now, if your system code gets corrupted, what happens? The bootloader switches on, loads the system code, and the thing just shits itself. So, um, what you need to do in this situation where um, you can't actually reflash it, you can't use a profile, you can't use anything else on it, is what's known as a hard reset. So, first off, you have to disconnect your USB. Then what you have to do is locate the little boot um, pins on the board. There are two pins that are right beside each other. Uh, and what happens is whenever you short them out with a piece of something conductive, um, for example, a pair of tweezers, screwdriver, or very fine nosed pliers. And then once you short that out, as in Make those two make contact between those two points, and then switch the US plug the USB in. It switches the thing into bootloader download mode, and then you, what you can do is you can then load up the VPC software, reflash the firmware on the device, and then create a new profile, and you're good to go. The thing's back up and running. So I'll just show you where it is on this device. Uh, hopefully you can see this if I bring this closer to the camera. There are two pins here, two tiny little metal pins. So all I have to do now is hold that on, plug in the USB, and then take this off, and then I can start proceeding to do the reflashing. So that's it, that's, uh, that's it in a nutshell. It's not too complicated. Um, if you go to our forum, you'll see a uh, post that has pictures of most of the PCB layouts, and shows you which pins, or where the pins are to short them out. Um, if you're an owner of a V1 or V2 uh, verbal throttle, you don't need to actually do that. The little button on the left throttle handle, it's one tiny little button by itself, it, it's, it's actually wired as the reset pin. So what you do is you unplug the USB, hold that button down, plug the USB in and you're good to go. No need to open up with those ones. Well, I hope this helps folks.